Hello, my name is Ben Brownlee from Curious Turtle, and I'm going to show you how we do a quick screen replace using either Adobe After Effects or Adobe Premiere and Mocha 2019. But let's come in and take a quick look at our source material. And it's actually quite a challenging screen replacement as well. The screen moves around quite substantially. It also has a curved edge. And if you notice about a third of the way through, we have a dirty great big hand covering a significant portion of the screen. Now I'm gonna be using the Mocha Pro plugin to do this, but if you don't have that, then we could do a lot of this with the bundled version of Mocha that comes with After Effects. So let's launch up our Mocha now, and I'll use my controls down at the bottom here to play back our image. Now, if you're already familiar with Mocha, this might look a little bit different for you. We're gonna be starting to work with the Essentials workspace in Mocha. And up at the top here, I can choose which workspace that I want to be working in. We're going to start with Essentials, because this workspace is going to give me all the tools I need to get my track started. So the next thing to do is choose our frame where we're going to start the track. And I want to choose something where we've got the best chance of getting a perfect track. Now I could start here where we have a nice clear view of the phone, but we're going to have problems when the fingers wrap around the screen here. So why not start actually on this frame? Now, if I come up here to the toolbar, I'm gonna to create a layer that's going to define the screen. Now I could use one of the new primitive shape tools to draw either a rectangle or a circle. And obviously the rectangle would be great if I didn't have the fingers sticking out over the top of the screen here. So instead, what I'm gonna do is come to my layers palette over in the top hand left. I'm just gonna select and delete those layers because I don't want those. And instead, I'm going to use my X-Spline tool. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click to define my points to draw a shape around my screen, missing out the fingers because I don't really want to have those in. And I'm going to right click to close my shape off. And already you can see where Mocha is different than point trackers, because instead of defining four points for the four corners of my screen, it's actually going to track the texture within this shape right here. And I'm good to go. I can come over to my track motion options and choose what sort of track that I want to do. Do I want to just do a translation? So just track the position or do I want to have scale in there as well? Maybe rotation. I'll turn skew on if the object is skewing. For example, if I was tracking this arm and it was moving back and forth there, sort of twisting around. But in this case, I'm going to choose perspective because we have a nice flat surface we're tracking and all four points here are going to move in conjunction with each other. So perspective is great for doing things like screen replacements or license plate replacements, that sort of thing. And I'm happy to go. I can just track this forward and Mocha will do its job. And we can see that it's tracked in down here on the timeline because you can see the frames that it's tracked have now turned blue and the ones that it hasn't tracked are still in red. So I'm just gonna track this back a little bit more just until we get to the area where the hand is gonna come in. And I can stop the tracking at any time by pressing escape or the stop button. There we go. So around about there is going to be good. So I've got just over half of the screen tracked now. And this seems like as good a time as any to actually check to see whether our track is working or not. Now, a very interesting thing about Mocha is that this shape data that we have here doesn't necessarily match up to the tracking data that we have. One way to think of it is that the shape data is sitting on top of the track data so that we can start moving this shape around and changing this shape up whilst maintaining the underlying tracking data. And of course, this is fantastic for row scoping. But when we come to screen replacements, the best way to see what the data is doing is to use the surface. So if I turn the planar surface on, this gives us our blue box that defines the plane that we've tracked. And what we'd like to do in this case is actually line it up with the phone itself. And new with Mocha 2019 is the ability to actually transform this surface. So we can rotate it, we can scale it up and down. We can move it around without any issues. And if I want to move uh, points one at a time, I can do that just by clicking and dragging on the corner points. And let's press play. And that's very cool, but it, it still is lacking the ability to actually see how, uh, how good our track really is. And in this case, I can now come over and show the grid. And what the grid does is it just takes our 
plane that we've defined, our surface, and it just sits on top of that. So it sort of extends over to the edges. And what this does, it makes it very easy to see if our corners are slipping or if we have any sort of wobbles or any sort of strangeness going on in our image that we don't really want. So no track and track, and it all sort of starts sitting on there quite nicely. So I'm happy with that so far. So I'm going to turn off the grid. I'm going to turn off my surface and let's look about tracking the rest of this stuff in. But before I do anything else clever, I'm just going to come up to my layers and rename this layer screen track. There we go. And a layer can actually contain more than one shape. So if I came here and added a new circle into here and come to view mats and turn my mats on, give these a nicer color, you can see that where these two shapes overlap, it's actually going to be cutting out that shape from the overall layer. And it's absolutely fantastic when we're doing a more sort of straightforward screen replace where we're just tracking the whole surface in and maybe there's a shine or something that's coming across the screen, we can just exclude it with a second shape on the same layer. Now, unfortunately, it's going to be a bit trickier to do it in this case because we've got this whole hand coming over the top that's going to mess up our track. So I'm just going to undo a couple of times and turn off my mats because I want to show you another way of excluding areas from being tracked. And that is by using a track mat. And the track mat is simply just a secondary layer that's going to cut out the stuff from layers underneath it. In this case, we're going to create a new shape for the hand. So I'm going to turn off processing. I'm going to turn off visibility. I'm also going to lock the screen just in case so I don't accidentally come in and make any changes on it. And now I'm going to create a new shape around my hand here. And I'm going to use another new tool with Mocha 2019, which is a magnetic layer. So I'm just going to click on this here. And I'm going to click once just to start the shape. And as I move across my hand, you can see it's fixing a shape along the area. And at any point, I can just click again and it will create another point for me and turn that area red. So I can just create another point here, come around here, create another point here, another point down there, another point down there. And I could just again right click just to close up that shape. And that will automatically create a number of points to fit my shape. I'm going to undo that a second just so I can show you one other thing. If you're not happy with how it's finding the edge, at any point you can just click and hold and you'll turn it into a freehand tool so you can make this shape whatever you want. And if you release, it will take it back to the normal magnetic tool. Let's just undo that again. Quite enjoyed that. It wasn't quite what we were after. So I hit that there and I can click and hold and that will close my shape for me. So you can see here we've got actually quite a lot of points created for us to try and fit the shape that we drew. If this is too detailed for us, I can go back into my magnet tool, a new pop-up comes here, which is called detail. And I can just click and scrub here to take the detail down. And the lower the detail, the fewer the points. I just come back to my pick tool, my arrow tool. And this is still looking a little bit too detailed for a garbage mask. So what I'm going to do is use my transform tool here. And I'm just going to click on one of the edges. And I can hold down shift to make sure that I scale in proportion. And I can also hold down Alt or Option on the Mac, and that will scale it from the center. So this gives me a slightly bigger shape, slightly looser shape that I can use as the track mat. All I have to do is maybe just adjust a couple of the, uh, the points here. And now I think we're good to go. Let's just rename this one Hand Track Mat. Now I don't want to have to do any work with this. The less work I have to do, the happier I am. So even though we're going to use this shape to cut out another shape, I'm actually going to use the Mocha Tracker just to track this through. So we limit the amount of manual work I have to do. So I'm going to come down to my track motion options. And in this case, skew is going to be absolutely perfect for me. So now let's just track this backwards and see what we get. Cool. And we'll track a little bit forwards. There we go. And Mocha is telling me the tracking was terminated prematurely because one or more layers was not tracked properly. And of course it wasn't because the hand is going off screen. So even though Mocha could feel like magic sometimes, there are limits to what we can track. But that's cool. And you can see that the hand itself is pretty much tracked in properly. The only thing we've got really is this finger that's, uh, that's out of whack. As I said earlier, now we've got this tracked in, the shape itself 
is actually just sitting on top of this track data. So I can come in and manually add a few keyframes on this finger and the rest of the hand track will actually follow in. And we don't have to worry about the rest of the hand because that should be tracked in pretty nicely. And I can be a bit loose with this because we are just using this as a track map. So long as we cover the essentials, this should be perfectly fine. Cool, I'm happy with that. So now we've tracked our hand in, let's use it so we can finish off our screen track. So I'm going to turn off the processing on the hand track because I don't want to track this in anymore. I'll turn the visibility on on our screen track and I'll turn processing on and turn the lock off. Let's come back to our last frame. And as if that track map wasn't enough, what I can also do is I can add a little keyframe down at the bottom here. I can also add a couple of keyframes before we do the tracking to maybe help Mocha out even more. So in this case, I'm going to sort of bring this in, give it a little bit more data to deal with, maybe even some of the edges at the corner up the top here. And even though this shape looks completely strange right now, this quick technique can help to achieve even better tracking quality. So let's just hit track backwards on this now, and you'll see that the shape itself starts moving around a little bit while it's tracking through. But you can see now as we move through it, it's actually a lot more stable than it was previously. But of course, we know that the only way to really check this out is to show the surface data and the grid data. And let's take a little playback of that and see what we've got going on there. And what we're looking for is any sort of twitching or slippage where the, the track data isn't moving how we expect it to. And now that is looking great. Now, if I'm happy with that, I want to take this out as usable tracking data. And I can do this in a couple of different ways. I can export out that tracking data and we can decide what host to take it out for. And this list will depend on which version of Mocha you're working with. So we can take this out as an After Effects corner pin, which supports motion blur. And I can either save this out as a file or just copy it straight to the clipboard. And let's just exit out of Mocha Pro here. So now I want to apply this tracking data. I'm going to take my screen, bring it over the top there, and I want this to be the screen insert. Now, I tried just to paste in the tracking data right now. It's going to bring it in, but it's not going to look right. That's because this corner pin data is expecting this layer to be the same size as the composition, the original composition. So let's undo that paste keyframes. And this is what we can do if your insert is not the same size as the comp. I can just right click, go pre compose. I'm going to move all my attributes into the new composition, and I will call this one water screen replace, hit OK, and make sure to open this comp up. Now I can go right click on the layer again, go to transform, fit to comp. And this will stretch this out so it fits into the composition. Now if I pop back into my other composition, I still have Mocha's transform data in my clipboard. I can just go paste on this and that will paste that into place. And because I chose the version of the data that supports motion blur, I can turn motion blur onto this as well and start getting a more realistic result. So without motion blur, with motion blur. Let's play this back. Now, if you're not entirely sold on this effect so far, you might be right. Um, there's just a little thing happening to ruin the effect. Obviously, our screen is just sat over the top of everything else. But that's the reason we used a green screen. I'm going to set my original over the top here and I'll come up to my effects and use a Kia. Now there are various chroma keys in Adobe CC, but I'm going to use the Continuum Primat Studio from Boris Effects, which has a nice simple interface to help generate advanced keys with just a few clicks. And I'll just draw over my screen and I think we're good to go. So let's have a little look at that now. And that's fitting in a lot better. And if I'm using the Mocha Pro plugin in Premiere, I can do a similar thing as well. So I'm going to come into Mocha again. I've got my same project loaded into this clip in Premiere. That's it. Cool. Now, instead of exporting out my corner pin here, another way of working with this is to use the insert module within Mocha Pro. And I can do this by coming to my screen track, going to layer properties, and I can use an insert clip to insert either a logo or one of the grids. I can import a file of my choosing. In this case, I'll take the water, or I can define an insert layer within the plugin in Premiere to choose a layer from the timeline. 
Let's take a look at the water for now, just for a second. There we go, that's fitting in nicely. But what I can also do if I want to have motion blur on this is if I come out of the essentials and back into classic mode, this is where we can start to see the full power of Mocha and what we have available to us. So if I come into insert, just go add motion blur on that, come out of the Mocha Pro plugin, go to my module renders and go to render, my insert cutout, and I have just the phone screen moving around here. So let's just come in and duplicate that clip up. And just like with After Effects, Premiere also has a number of keys available. But again, I'm going to use the Continuum Primat key from Boris FX. Just drop that over the top there, select the effect, and just select my green screen. Now I'm just going to render this out, and everyone's happy. And so you've got quite a complex screen replacement done directly within Premiere here, without having to go out to After Effects or any other sort of compositing system at all. And we can, of course, use Mocha to generate up more complex roto splines. In this case, I've used the magnetic tool to create a slightly tighter roto spline around the hand. And I can either export out the shape data or just view and apply the mat directly within the Mocha plugin. And if I'm using this in After Effects, I can create After Effects masks directly from that Mocha Pro plugin as well. Then it's just a simple case of adding a bit of spill suppression. And we've got a nicer shape around our hand here. And that's a quick look of how we do a more complex screen replacement with Mocha 2019 using some of the core skills that you're going to use again and again and again in Mocha. So that's the ability to choose and change the area that you're going to be tracking in. And if things start moving in front of that area, either creating another shape on that same layer or creating a track mat to cut out the problematic areas. And we can create those nice and quickly using our new magnetic shape tools or the primitive splines. I hope that's been helpful to you. My name's Ben Brownlee from Curious Turtle, and I'll see you again very soon. Thanks for now.